In this clip, I will just briefly run through the issues arising from forecasting in moving average models. So here we have equation five from the lecture. This is, of course, a moving average process of order one. So let's say we are modeling a time series with this process. And let's also say that we obtained estimated parameters here. The parameters we need are alpha hat and theta hat one, theta hat one. Okay, so we obtained these. We know we can't get them from OLS, so it will have to be something else, for instance, maximum likelihood, but we're not worried about this at this stage. Then we want to produce a forecast, let's say a one step ahead forecast for yt plus one, given information available at time t, so that capitalized y against our information set. So we'll do this first mechanically, we'll just replace the yt plus one with the process equation and the parameters with the estimated parameters, so alpha plus epsilon t plus one, okay, because we have yt plus one here, plus theta one hat times now this is one period lagged, that error term is one period lagged relative to this, so we need one period lagged relative to this. We have epsilon t. So, and of course, all of this conditional on time t. So the, the key now is to understand that this is a constant that goes outside the expectation. The expectation of the error term at time t plus one, and given information at time t is going to be zero, so there will be a plus zero here, and that guy is again a constant that comes out, and the expected value of the error term at time t, given information at time t. Now this is not a random variable anymore, so we we have the information to know this although we haven't just right now yet talked about where to get it from. So this is the equation which we, which we will need. Okay? All that information will be available at time t. The, the question is now, of course, where does this guy come from? So where does epsilon t come from? So basically what we need is an estimated value. As usual, we don't know the true epsilons, we need estimates of these guys. So what we want is epsilon t hat. Now, two ways. Firstly, you work in MATLAB. And we will have estimated residuals amongst that the residual of the last observation if you want to do a once ahead forecast you can get these from the rmax filter function which is the function we will use to estimate armor processes details here in the on the eclair website um, not yet available as per 13 of November in terms of forecasting, there's detail on how to use RMAX filters. Forecasting information will hopefully be available in the next few days. If you don't have MATLAB, for instance, in an exam, okay, unfortunately, we won't allow you to use MATLAB there, you need to calculate that estimated error term. And I'll just quickly go through how we do this. So let's say we want epsilon t. I'll get the head soon, okay? But I'll leave it off for a purpose. What we'll start out with is that we solve equation five for epsilon t. And what we get in that case is epsilon t equals y t minus alpha minus 
theta 1 hat and I should use these hats because we are using estimated terms t minus 1. Okay, so does that help us? Well, at this stage it doesn't really help us because while we have, let me use that with a tick, we have data up to time t because we use them for the estimation, so that's fine. We have this estimated coefficient, but what about this guy? That's the residual one period prior. Well, if we don't know the last residual, we won't know the one before. So we want to replace epsilon t minus 1 with something else. Now, let's do exactly the same again. Let's say, all right, we'll state equation 5 just for t minus 1, and then we solve for epsilon t minus 1. Okay, so we could say state equation 5 for t minus 1 and solve for epsilon t minus 1. What we then get is epsilon t minus 1 equals y t minus 1 minus alpha hat minus theta 1 hat times epsilon t minus 2. Okay, in the same dilemma, of course, we have this, we have this, we have this, but we don't have this. So you can see how this will now, we can do this again and again. First, you may think, well, you know, doing it once didn't deliver a solution, doing it twice didn't deliver a solution, why should doing it more often deliver a solution? So in any case, what we're going to do is we're going to write Imagine in your mind doing this for t minus 2, t minus 3, and so forth, all the way until we come back to the first observation, to 1. And then, of course, we will get exactly the same equation. We just have to be careful with the time indices. And one period lag is going to be epsilon naught. Okay, and again, first observation available, estimated coefficients available, this guy is not available. But now the crucial step, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that this guy is equal to zero. Okay, we'll just set this in a way arbitrarily. And if you have a stationary process, it shouldn't really matter what you really set it to, but you want to set it to a reasonable value. On average, our error terms are zero, so we'll set it to the average value. Now, once you have this, once you set this to zero, you can calculate epsilon 1. That will be epsilon 1 hat. Now, then you can go to the previous equation, which we haven't written down here, the one for epsilon 2, because that will use epsilon 1 hat. And then you can get epsilon 2 hat and so forth. Eventually, you can calculate epsilon t minus 2 hat and then epsilon t minus 1 hat. Once you have epsilon t minus 1 hat, you can calculate epsilon t. So everything falls into place. And then once you have calculated this, you can use this in here. Now you can add the hat. And that means that once you've done that, you have this value. That's a zero. You have that. You have this. You have this. And it's just a matter of plugging in the values, and you will get epsilon yt plus expected value, sorry, the expected value of yt plus 1 conditional on yt. So that is the trick. Now, of course, all of this procedure here, okay, something very similar to this does, of course, happen in this Amax filter function, okay, it's just that someone has done the hard work fast. Unfortunately, in the exam, that will not work. So in the exercise, you will find practical examples for this with numbers, and uh, that will hopefully finally then um, set in. You will then understand how it works.